Welcome to the Intergeo TV News. This was already day two of Intergeo 2021 and Intergeo's Wednesday was a real restart kickoff. In fact, despite the corona requirements and hygiene rules, there was and still is a real genuine trade fair feeling in the halls in Hanover today. So extensive conversations, happy get togethers and getting up to date where one stands and goes. So trade show, it's fun again. <laughs> And now let's switch to my colleague Leonard from the social media team who is also doing something exciting today and is about to do a live podcast in one of the virtual exhibitor rooms on the digital platform. Thank you, Denise. My highlight of the day is the live podcast I will do now together with Bruno Krensky, the Brazilian intergeo and surveying enthusiast and his good friend Kent Grove. Ken Grove is the owner of the one and only surveying podcast and he's from Arizona. So we never met in person, but we will meet now on the Intergeo Measuring Masters booth and we'll do a live podcast with over with a lot of people from different countries and we all are super happy to talk about the Intergeo topics. You will find the podcast later on the Measuring, Ma Measuring Masters YouTube channel and also on the Geoholics podcast channels. So I'm super happy and can't wait to see the full result. And now back to Denise and I will join the podcast. Our topics today are personalities of the surveying. I really hope to enjoy the podcast which will come out next Sunday. I would like to welcome to the Interview TV studio Dr. Ilka Mai from LockLab Consulting. Hello, Ilka. Nice to have you here. Hi, Denise. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I guess, uh, the last time we saw each other was a year ago at Intergeo Digital 2020. Mm -hmm. And yeah, how have you been since then? Busy or how was your year? <laughs> The year was weird, uh, weird, I think, for everyone. Uh, it's been a difficult and challenging time. Uh, luckily, um, we, we were quite busy, or we still are really busy, and um, it's been a good year for us because less travel for me personally meant that all of a sudden I had more time to think. Mm -hmm. So we're quite excited that with LockLab now, we are moving or we're making a major next step into a new product, into a new market, mm -hmm. and we will hopefully be able to launch that very soon. Okay. So, all in all, for us as a firm and for me personally, it's been a really good year. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So use the time very well. But um, Ilka, I would like to introduce you to our audience um, and to our viewers here of Interview TV because Dr. Ilka Mai is an expert on digital twins and on digitalization in the construction sector. And during several years of professional experience in the UK, she has provided strategic and operational support to major projects and organizations. And in 2015, Ilka Mai was instrumental in the development of the step-by-step -step plan, digital planning in building in Germany as a digitalist plan und bauen. And since 2016, Ilka Mai has been co-chair of the UBIM task group, an association of the largest public sector client organizations in Europe for the introduction of BIM. So Ilka, how do you see the digitalization of the construction industry? Where do we stand in your view in Germany? Germany or in Europe? Okay, there are a couple of really positive things that I'm that we start to see happening. Um, so one is we definitely see much more awareness, definitely more awareness around BIM, but about digitization in the construction sector as such. That's good. We also see that the market and the supply chain is now starting to build the capacity to deliver projects in BIM, etc. So we see more and more people adopting new technologies and new processes. And also, and that's personally, I think that's really important that we now see a wider adoption of digital technologies, not only in design and construction, but also now in operation and maintenance. So what we call the whole life cycle of an asset, mm -hmm. that's now slowly starting to happen. So that's all the positive things that I'm seeing. Okay. Uh, there are a few less positive things as well. Still, I do see a disconnect uh, on projects when some people say, okay, are we doing the project in the traditional way or are we doing it in a BIM way? 
And that shouldn't be after such a long time. We should see we deliver projects and we adopt new processes, new technology, digital technologies. We, we have a different way of how we produce data, how we manage data. But there shouldn't be that disconnect any longer between, oh, are we doing it in the traditional way? That doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it's just if somebody is uh, saying or decides to say, we're now going to do BIM. So um, this means um, what processes and steps are evolved in that decision, for example. Yeah, and that's exactly where a lot of people that embark on this oh, journey to we BIM. We do it now. We do, we it, do now. it now. Fair <laughs> enough. That's all right. It's a decision. That's good. What do I do? And what, then, what kind of program? Or yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then that's what usually happens. So what, what software do I need and uh, which training do I need mm -hmm. to send my, my staff to? Okay, fair enough. But then you start talking about, so how do you change your existing core processes in your business? Mm -hmm. How do you adopt your maybe integrated management system? How do you ensure governance over data, security over data? Um, and and uh, procurement uh, rules, for example, and all of that, when you start talking to people about, so what do you do about that? And they look at you completely blank and say, why? I want to do BIM. What's this to do with procurement? Well, a lot, especially when you're a client, when you're client side. So, and that's, that needs to happen as well. And a lot of people tend to overlook all these changes, which are, which are required when we really want to move into a digital way of procuring projects, delivering projects, and operating assets in the future. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, Eka, ever since I know you, you've talked about BIM, integrated BIM very early. Um, you gave lectures um, and you gained really experience with it. And uh, yeah, what do you think makes BIM the only alternative? And why does only BIM lead the construction industry in the future? Depends a little bit. My answer is my understanding of BIM is really, it is part of digitizing the entire sector. It is really not just a tool for design and constructing something. It's bigger than that. And if we think of BIM as a very standardized way, then it forces us to think about standards, processes, and about the whole lot. And that's why I think we have to go through that first. And that's why in many countries, including in Germany, uh, the EU BIM task group, etc., we always um, take this phased approach and we say, okay, let's define a first level of complexity and just ask and start with a selection of things that we do properly and we do all together before we move on to the next level of complexity. Mm -hmm. And I think this is that's exactly the right way to do it. And BIM, as I say, forces us to do it in a more structured way, in a more standardized way, so that we can take the entire supply chain and market along on that journey. And we don't lose people because we are doing it in a very unorganized way, maybe dominated by very few big players in the market mm -hmm. and lose all the smaller ones. Wow, OK. So, um uh, last year, um, you talked about breaking down the silos, also die, die Silos öffnen, die Daten vernetzen. No? We talked about that last time at Interview 2020, where we were only on the digital platform. And uh, has that improved since we talked last year? That's really an interesting one. And that topic is far too big to see major improvements just within yeah. one year, especially when you can't travel and you can't really see what's happening. Um, still, we do have or many organizations operate very much in silos and they have their data locked up in silos. But at the very beginning of our conversation, I talked about the exciting next step for LockLab and that's exactly what we are doing. We're trying to provide a 3D model as the integration basis of all the siloed information that sits within various systems, could be real-time data, sensor data, um, your work orders, your, your asset management data. It's always locked away somewhere. By integrating that and giving people a secure but also intuitive access to that data through a contextual 3D model which provides spatial information and a lot of context, where is it, what is it, similar to GIS but now in a, in a proper three-dimensional world. Mm -hmm. That has a massive, ma incredible power to unlock these silos and create the horizontal mm -hmm. la layer and platform. Okay. 
So you will bring the revolution for it on the market on your definitely <laughs> next year, same time, same wow, place. Great. <laughs> um, Eka, uh, you hosted also this morning a BIM session at the Intergeo conference. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what is the role of geodesy or geoinformation here at Intergeo in the context of BIM? Again, thinking about let's say in railway, mm -hmm. you create a BIM model of uh, track and the uh, uh, signals, etc. That is somewhere in the world. So you, again, you need the context, you need the geodata. Where is this? And, and what's around it? So we need to see that all the data, talking about silos earlier, so we need to see all that data coming together. And geoinformation plays such an important role because all the survey data that we're receiving, everything else, that all needs to come together so that the design but also the digital twins, which we are now creating increasingly. Just look around here at Intergeo. So many companies are now doing reality capture, etc. And that all comes together on the back of geospatial information and data. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ilka, for joining us here at Intergeo TV. I wish you really lots of fun at Intergeo and the good conversations. And looking forward to see you <laughs> next time with your revolutionary uh, three digital, digital, twin twin digital twin from Luxe like Consulting. Thank, Thank you very you, much. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. So let's stay on the topic of BIM. Our reporter Helen Weyand has been checking out the conference for you today. Danke, Denise. Ja, ich befinde mich jetzt hier gerade im Konferenzraum, wo heute der BIM-Thementag stattfindet und werde mich jetzt mal ein bisschen umhören, ähm, ein paar Referenten befragen, was sie denn heute hier so auf der Stage präsentiert haben. Ich habe gerade das Thema ähm, digitale Souveränität von Kommunen zur Sprache gebracht. Das ist ein unheimlich wichtiges Thema, was ich nicht nur als Leiter des Vermessungs- und Katasteramtes in Düsseldorf da vor der Brust habe, sondern auch als äh, Vertreter des Deutschen Städtetags. Und das betrifft alle Kommunen, großen Kommunen in Deutschland, dass es unheimlich wichtig ist, die Daten in eigener Zuständigkeit zu haben. Nämlich wir haben unheimlich äh, große Datenschätze in der Stadtverwaltung, sondern auch zum Zweiten die Kompetenzen aufzubauen über zum Beispiel ähm, Open-Source-Software, eigene Lösungen, Lösung anzubieten und dann natürlich mit den eigenen Mitarbeiterinnen und Mitarbeitern, die wir dafür brauchen, für diese spannende Aufgabe das Ganze zu realisieren. Und wenn das Ganze noch flankiert ist durch eine Unterstützung in der Stadtspitze, in der Politik, bei der Verwaltung, dann ist das schon halb gewonnen und dann kann man sich auf den Weg machen, auch nutzerorientierte Lösungen im Internet für die Menschen anzubieten. die ja, Entwicklung in Hamburg zur Datenplattform und wir kommen ja hier so aus der äh, Richtung, dass wir früher eine Geodateninfrastruktur aufgebaut haben für die Stadt, um Geodaten interoperabel für verschiedene Fachanwendungen bereitzustellen und im Rahmen der ganzen Smart City äh, Thematik und auch der Digitalstrategie der Freien Hansestadt Hamburg hat sich eben herausgestellt, dass wir sozusagen diese GDI-Gedanken auf die ganze Stadt ausrollen müssen und auch auf, auch auf alle urbanen Daten, nicht nur auf Geodaten und diese Evolution sozusagen von der GDI bis hin zu einer urbanen Datenplattform für eine Smart City oder eine digitale Stadt Hamburg, die habe ich kurz dargestellt und ein paar Anwendungsbeispiele gezeigt, warum und welchen Erfolg sozusagen wir diesen Change gemacht haben. Ja, ich bin so froh, dass man in diesem Jahr auch wieder hier in Präsenz endlich zusammenkommen kann. Ich weiß nicht, wie viele Zuhörer jetzt hier in dem Vortrag eben waren, von 80 bis 100 und über 50 Kanäle waren zugeschaltet und es ist ganz toll, dass man über diese Kanäle dann auch wieder ein Stück weit diskutieren kann, etwas präsentieren kann und noch ein Feedback über Chat oder über Wortmeldungen bekommt. Und ich freue mich dann auch auf ein Wiedersehen im nächsten Jahr. Und jetzt zurück zu dir, Denise. Thank you, Helen. And now the outlook for the third day of Intergeo. On the stage on Thursday at 10.20 a.m. you will experience Esri on the topic GIS and BIM for AEC project delivery and operation. And in the conference you'll hear a presentation on digitalization in real estate brokerage at 11 a.m. And Dr. Andreas Eichhorn will share his knowledge about data handling of BIM and laser scan with you in his lecture at 3 p.m.
And I'm looking forward to an interview with Dr. Uwe Bacher from Hexagon Geosystems about the Mirror World, Germany's digital twin, and Metro HD City data. So have fun at interview. We say goodbye for now with the impressions of day two.